Welcome to our broadcast of today. Before we explain the scriptures, I want you to read them. What if you go to the website vchurch.us, look for the tab read, and then go under bulletins and with the date, August 4th, 2024, click and download, and then you will have the scriptures that we will read this morning. Also, you can do it if you're watching in the comfort of your home using the QR code that is on the screen. That's right. We are very pleased to inform you that our new TV app for Samsung TVs is available now. Now, you must have a newest version of TV. It has to be 2022, 3 or 4, because the technology of Samsung requires that. That's not the case with the Fire Stick TV, Roku TV, or Apple TV. Those particular companies, they do, can help you to download and install GN TV, regardless of the year and model of their devices. Also remember, you are always welcome to check our website, bechurch.us. Here is the QR code. Pound. Yes, and YouTube, of course. We are broadcasting most of the time on Facebook as well. What we want is to share with the world the Word of God. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not ruin the produce of your land, and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of Armies. Today's topic is the Lord Jesus training His disciples. And one thing that we know is that the Lord Jesus, our Lord, loves everyone. He came to become the greatest example for every human being, correct? But not just in the human aspect. He came to become the supreme leader of humanity. The Lamb of God came to give His life for our rescue. He became the Lion of Judah. And of course, the King of Kings, our Lord Jesus Christ. But He loves everyone. And because of his love, he wants us to learn. We go through a process to learn, you know? And you know what it's about learning? It's all about repetition. Repetition. Do you remember in school writing the letter A? A, capital, lowercase, A, B, C. And we all even did uh, songs. you remember that? The alphabet? And as well, we need to work with numbers, correct? One, two, three, etc. Repetition. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 and 7 talks about that. Repetition is the key in learning. Repetition. The Lord Jesus took his time training his disciples. One of those disciples is John, the Apostle John. And he writes here, he wrote three letters, first, second, and third of John. He writes something I want to share with you that is very beautiful. We are going to read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this reflection. I write to you, dear children, because your sins are forgiven through our Lord Jesus Christ. I write to you, young people, because you have defeated Satan. I write to you, fathers, because you know the one true Lord God who existed from the beginning. 1 John chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. You know what is the meaning of this passage? The meaning of this passage is that there are three phases in the process of maturing as a believer. Yes, there are three phases or stages. Children, those who get to know and understand the gospel, receive forgiveness. Your sins are forgiven, is what 
John says, the young ones are those who have defeated Satan. I will explain that to you in a moment. And fathers, those are the ones who get to know the one true God. You know, when, when you start to hear about the Bible and, and understand about the gospel, you probably remember this. It was a beautiful gift, right? The gift of salvation. Getting to know that the Lord God gave his son for the forgiveness of our sins. That is pretty much the gospel. Knowing that we are sinners and he paid the price, our Lord God, by sending his son Jesus to die on Calvary for us. That's why he became an example in everything. The supreme leader, the wonderful Lamb of God, the Lion of Judah, the King of Kings. As children of God, we receive that forgiveness and then we know that we are accepted in the kingdom of God. You understand that. That is the first level, if you like. You understand? Children. But then, through the past of the years, you start to learn many things in the scripture and then you will eventually, eventually will be able to defeat Satan. Some people do not even know that they already have defeated Satan in many aspects of their lives. <laughs> For real. And perhaps, my friend, watching and listening today, you don't even knew that. That whenever you stop doing what is wrong, you were defeating Satan. Whenever you said no to the wrong things in your life, you were defeating Satan. In many other aspects... There is a maturity that comes from receiving the forgiveness of our sins. As I told you, right, the first layer. And then you start to grow to become a young fella in the Lord. Now you are able to conquer. You are able to not just to stop sinning, but doing good things. But there is a third layer or level. Father. That the mature believer who finally understands and knows the one true God. That person is the one that is not acting up like a child, you know? And it's not uh, like uh, young fellas either, that they just feel like they can do many things. No, they, they are calmer and actually stronger in their faith. That is the third stage, where we all should aim to be in that stage. As a mature believer, you eventually will find out that the purpose in life is not about you. It is all about God and His calling in your life. That is the characteristic of a mature believer, you know. Not like a young believer or even a, a kid believer. You know, they think that it's all about them. You know, God give me this. God do this for me. God give me, give me, give me. That's the childish behavior. You see, even the young believer, even conquering things, they don't understand really until they mature. As a mature believer, you understand the purpose in life is not about you. It is all about God and his calling in your life. And that calling, my friend, could be not necessarily serving the Lord as a pastor or as a preacher or as a Bible teacher. The calling from God to your life could be about many things, many things. But you need to discover God's vision for your life. You need to discover that vision because actually that vision is going to evolve and you are going to experience those changes season by season. Because in life, everything is changing. Some people believe that many things change every five years. Other people believe it's every seven years. I really don't know what is the number, but I just know one thing. Things continue changing in life. In one season, you are doing one thing, and then the next season you are doing other thing. But the important thing is that eventually you need to become a mentor for someone. As a mature believer, as an adult, as a father, 
level in Christianity, you need to become a mentor for someone. You know, my friend, our Lord Jesus chose 12 individuals from different backgrounds to train them to change the course of history of humankind. They come from different backgrounds. They all are Jews, but very different. Each one of them with their own peculiar personality, skills, and traumas. Each one of them. Today, I want to present to you some of the characteristics of these guys. And I think you're going to appreciate that. For example, let's start with Peter. Peter, for example, he was a classic overreacting type of man. And I'm going to show you some scriptures to prove this. For example, in John 13, 37 through 38, this is what is the, what Peter said. I am ready to die for you. You remember that? And Jesus answered, Will you really give your life for me? The truth is, before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. But he overreacted initially. I will die for you. Another example on Gethsemane. You know what happens? John chapter 18 verse 10 tells us that Peter had a sword which he pulled out and he struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. You tell me, is that a calm person? I don't think so. It's very overreacting. I will do that. I will do that. Boom, boom. Just to mention one example, Andrew <laughs> is a different type of personality. I, I think that Andrew loved to instigate people. You know, for example, let me give you two scriptures that talk a little bit about his personality. The first one in John chapter 1, verse 41, and then the second in chapter 6, verse 9. The first thing Andrew did was to go and find his brother Peter. Andrew said to him, we have found the Savior. The second scripture, Andrew said, here is a boy with five loaves of bread and two little fish, but that is not enough for so many people. I consider that someone that is an instigator because he's trying to initiate something, you know. <laughs> it is kind of interesting when you think about it, because Andrew knew that Jesus was the Messiah. So he's, he says, hey, Peter, let's go. We found the Savior. We found the one that is going to redeem Israel. Come on, let's go. He's, he's instigating this situation that ended up pretty cool. This other scenario with the bread and the fish, it's about a moment when there is a multitude of people and the Lord Jesus is telling them, telling the disciples, guys, we need to feed these people. The disciples actually want him the Lord Jesus to get rid of everyone because it was dark and all that. But the Lord Jesus was there knowing that what he will do. And here is Andrew instigating the whole situation. He says, there is a boy here with five loaves of bread and two little fish. But that's not enough for so many people. You, you see that he says, two little fish? It, you know, anybody else will say, well, there is some bread and fish here, Lord. No, he said, too little fish. He's pushing the Lord Jesus' buttons. Too little fish. And then he adds this. This is hysterical to me. But that's not enough for so many people. You know? Andrew trying to make a point. Trying to instigate a situation. So what are you going to do about that? <laughs> Different type of personality, you see. Peter was very overreacting. I will die for you. What? Phew, cutting off the ear of that guy. Andrew, on the other hand, is, is an instigator. He, he's clever, you know. He's trying to, to create a situation through his words. Hey, Peter, we found the Messiah. Planting the seed in Peter's mind. 
<laughs> and then, okay, can you do something with this, Lord Jesus? <laughs> Third example is James. James was a reactionary. Him and his brothers, they were, they were sent to go to preach the gospel and bring the news to the people in the whole area outside of Judea and Samaria and all that, that the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, was here healing people and all that. But there were was, there was people that didn't want to, to receive the news. So James, you know, pretty upset guy at this, at this point, comes to give the report to the Lord, right? So James is angry. You know, he's a reactionary. You know, he's not, this is not the kind of person that, that will just uh, say, well, I did what you told me, Lord. No, 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 no. He said, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven and destroy those people? <laughs> hey, I'm talking about one of the apostles, <laughs> James and his brother. Which, by the way, which is my fourth example, John seemed to be a little bit too sweet. You know, and the chapter 21 of his gospel, chapter 21, verse 20, you know, it says that the follower who had leaned against Jesus at the supper, you know, he he was too sweet. I just can't imagine the comments of the other guys, the other apostles there, when they see that John is reclining on the Lord's (laughs) chest, or I don't know exactly how that happened, but probably the rest were like, oh, Take it easy, Johnny. (laughs) You know, what's wrong with you? You see? He is sweet. He is sweet. It's it's a sensitive guy, you know? But in the eyes of some people, probably it was too much. I I don't know if it's too much, but it seems like he was a little bit too sweet. (laughs) Fifth guy is Thomas. Thomas was the negative guy. You know, in one occasion... The Lord Jesus is talking about what will happen to him when he goes to Jerusalem. (laughs) He says, we will go too. We will die there with Jesus. Very optimistic, right? Yeah, let's go. If Jesus is going and he's going to die, I'm going to die. We are going to die. Who cares? And another occasion, the Lord Jesus is talking about Paradise, heaven, eternity, the kingdom of God. And Thomas here is totally lost. And he says, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? You you don't know where the Lord Jesus is going? And eventually after his death and the Lord Jesus is risen. (laughs) Chapter 24 of John, (laughs) verse 35. This is Thomas. When the disciples tell them, hey, he's alive, he's back. He says, that's hard to believe. (laughs) That's hard to believe. And then he, he goes, I will have to see the nail holes in his hands, put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his sides. Only then I will believe it. There you go. Sweet disciple, huh? Six. This is Philip. You know, Philip, he he liked to talk too. And actually he did a phenomenal thing, bringing Nathaniel. But one day, my friend, it seems like Philip felt that he was accomplished because he brought Nathaniel to the Lord Jesus, you know? So he felt a little bit accomplished. And he tried to outsmart our Lord Jesus one day. But the Lord put him in his place. Listen to this. <laughs> Here is Philip saying, Lord, show us the Father. That's all we need. I want you to pay attention to this. Show us the Father. That's all we need. That's all we need? Are you serious, Philip? That's all you need? You need more than that. But the answer the Lord Jesus gave him is phenomenal. The Lord says, 
I have been with you for a long time. So you should know me. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father too. So why do you see that? Philip? But I want you to see the underlined section here when the Lord Jesus says, I have been with you. The Lord Jesus didn't say, you have been with me, which is true. But the Lord wanted to make a point, and today I want you to see this, because this is what happens to many believers. The Lord Jesus said, I have been with you for a long time, since the moment that you gave your life to me, since the moment that you surrender, since the moment that you are coming to church. I have been with you, but obviously you are clueless. All this time, Philip, that you have been with me, you are clueless. You just don't get it. I have been with you. The Lord Jesus has been with you in the person of the Holy Spirit. But what difference does it make if you don't get it? Okay, seventh example. Matthew. What can we tell about Matthew? He was a corrupt tax collector. Imagine someone who works in the city today, or IRS, or for the state, or federal government, but is corrupt. Somebody will say, I, I'm not sure if uh, people working for the city, or the state, or for the federal government can really be corrupt. Okay, so you live in La La Land. So you are not aware of all the acts of criminality that all these corrupt people are doing, corrupt politicians, stealing, faking invoices, increasing, increasing the cost of things because that contractor is his body, his friend. So you are not aware of that? Even in, in the private sector, many people that are in the purchase department, they don't give contracts to the company that benefits the most to the, their own company. There's corruption there. Nepotism. Corruption is everywhere. We know that. Well, guess what? Matthew comes from that kind of background. You see? Stealing, cheating, lying. The next example, number eight, is Judas Iscariot. Well, what can we say about that? <laughs> he betrayed the Lord. He's the traitor. Nine, Thaddeus. He simply disappeared. Do you know that in Acts chapter 1, verse 13, Remember, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, okay? The Lord Jesus died, he has risen, he ascended to heaven, book the facts, here we go, the beginning of the church. Chapter 1, the Lord Jesus is saying goodbye to the disciples, boom, and then they go to pray. The Lord Jesus told them, go to Jerusalem and pray. So here are the disciples. Guess who doesn't show up at all? He just disappeared. What happened with this guy? There is no other reference of himself in the whole Bible. The whole, the whole New Testament. This guy, Thaddeus. Who knows? And yet, there are people that they name churches after him. There are people that celebrate special days. Because in their religious calendar, there is a saint for each day. From where did they get that idea? It's not biblical. But you know what? What can I tell you about that religion? They are wrong. They are imposing the, the followers to bow bef before images that they made. And on and on and on. Well... This guy, Thaddeus, simply disappeared. And then I will talk to you about this other 10, 11, and 12 
which are Simon the Zealot, James the son of Alphaeus, and Bartholomew. They were quiet. They were in Acts chapter 1, verse 13. But they didn't say one word. There is no other reference of them. So they are the type of apostle, disciple, believer. Very quiet. And I want you to know this. There is nothing wrong with believers that are quiet either. Many people that are quiet, actually, they pray a lot. You know, my friend, among disciples, we need people of all kinds. <laughs> you know, in the church, we need people coming from different backgrounds, from the entrepreneurial environment, the sports environment, people that are very into machinery or, I don't know, software, music, business, young, old. It's okay. And among all the believers, we need quiet people too, those that are going to be praying for the rest. This is what we see here, my friends. The 12 disciples. What do we know about them? Well, we know that they were all messed up. Some of them could overcome their own traumas and weaknesses. But out of the 12, one went to the dark side. Judas Iscariot. He betrayed the Lord. Three of these did not say a peep. <laughs> they were quiet. They didn't say anything. They were just there, quiet, following Peter. And there is one that simply disappeared. He is the quitter. Where is that guy? Who knows? <laughs> he just, he's gone. Is he dead? Is he sick? What happened to him? Who knows? Simply stop coming to church. You see this? My friend, our Lord Jesus had patience with each one of them. What makes you think it will not put up with you? The Lord Jesus had tons of patience with every and each one of them. Like he has with me. Do you want to hear stories about the patience of my Lord with me? I can give you one story after the other. You, my beautiful church members, you have to put up with me because perfect I am not. Pretending that I am that great and all that, I'm not going to do that. You just need to ask my own family, my wife, my children, my siblings. I'm good person. I serve the Lord. Certainly I do a lot of good things for the Lord, but that doesn't make me perfect. And you know what? Every single day I wake up with the same idea. Lord, I want to serve you. I want to honor you. Tell me, what do you want me to do, Father? Lead me. Give me the strength, the wisdom. Illuminate me. But the Lord has been so patient with me. So what makes you think that he will not put up with you? What makes you think that? He will. Because the Lord loves you, my friend. He loves you greatly. In fact, you know, the excellent question is, are you willing to be trained by our Lord God to achieve your calling in life? That's the important question. Are you willing to be trained? It's not that if the Lord has the tolerance to put up with you, he has that tolerance and patience. The question is if you are willing to be trained by him. But not for your own thing. That's the difference. Hey. You think I don't remember what you have said to me? I want to have this and this. I want to buy this and that. I want to go here and there. I, I want. I want. I want. I heard you. And I put up with you, with your selfishness, like the Lord Jesus puts up with me. And he has patience with me. 
But the truth is what the Lord God wants for all of us is to achieve our calling in life. Because for everyone it's different, right? But it's not about what you want. It is totally about what our Lord Jesus wants you to do with your life. That is what the Holy Spirit is doing every single day in your life. Trying to show you. Remember, your, your vision will change. Your, your missions in life will evolve. We all have to move from one season to the next. But when we are sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, it's going to work out for you. But I will tell you something, my friend. You cannot be trained by a weak mentor. Do you know why so many people quit on me as a mentor or as a pastor? Because I am going to push them to grow and mature and give more because they can. I see the potential in each one of you. And I don't quit on you. You guys, some of you watching, you have quit on me. That's different. But you cannot be trained by a weak mentor, much less a mentor that is unholy. A mentor, a godly mentor, has to be someone that cares for eternity, cares for saving souls, and is devoted to the cause of the gospel. Yeah, of course, everybody wants to have a a cool pastor. Everyone wants to have... uh, star on TV and all that stuff. Yeah, such and such is my pastor. I have heard that all my life. Do you go to church? No, but uh, such and such famous person on TV is my pastor. Okay. They don't have a relationship with this man. And then most of the time you find out that all these famous people, all that they want is money. A new jet, a new suit, another mansion, and on and on, my friends. What kind of holiness is that? Just wanting worldly things. There is nothing wrong with a pastor that the Lord blesses with stuff. but. Is it possible that one thing is not good enough, that you have to have two of those or three, and every so often you have to replace it for the newest one? When they cost so much money, while there are millions of people walking to hell in countries that we cannot reach without the funds to send missionaries there, or Bibles in that language, or simply broadcast programs like this. And that is what people don't get. And I don't know if you get it, my friend. And I will tell you my commitment with the Lord is that I will serve Him the rest of my life. And that is not coming from yesterday, of course years ago when I committed to the Lord. You know, I became a believer in July 29th, 1987, at 7 p.m. I still have a relationship with that man of God, Pastor George. The issue is not how many members your pastor has in that church. The issue is not how many people are following him online or how many books he has sold or whatever. You know, who, whatever, those things, they are irrelevant. As irrelevant it is the type of pants or shirt this person has. Because it's not about the, the outside. It's about the inside. But the holiness of God in a pastor, in a mentor, will make him godly and is going to make him strong. But with patience is going to put up with their people. It's what the Lord Jesus did. But 
Honestly, my friend, when it's about you, you know what is what you need to do? You need to begin gaining souls for the kingdom of God. You need to start making disciples. Oh, you don't know how? Okay. Do you see here on the screen the image of that message? Jesus' witness. Jesus' is witness. This is our service number 400 since I began preaching on this church. We started this church in the year 2016. 400 sermons. That's just on Sunday, not including Bible studies. 400 sermons. Well, the number 400 and the QR code is there on the screen if you care for. I explain to you how you can witness. Because if you say, I really don't know how can I gain souls for the kingdom of God, there you go. If you really care, if you really want to be trained in every single aspect in the doctrine of the church, the Christian church, New Testament doctrine, not just me, but hundreds of great preachers all over the world are teaching those doctrines day and night, day and night. The problem is people don't want to be trained. They want to be entertained. How can you tell if somebody has advanced to maturity? Is that person gaining souls? Are you gaining souls? Okay, let's make it more simple. In the last year, how many people have you invited to come to church? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot that you don't attend church. Wah, wah. You see? People don't attend church. People don't give to the Lord. They don't read the Bible, really, you know. They just pretend, pretending, pretending. That, that's not how things work in the kingdom of God. That's why so many people are in trouble. But if you really want to do the right thing, you need to begin gaining souls for the kingdom of God. Invite people to come to church. Of course, I'm assuming you are attending church. If not, you must find a local church. And then you start making disciples, my friend. Friend, the Holy Spirit is here with us. It's coming down on you. Don't you get it? You saw several examples. You heard me talking about Peter and Andrew and John. And I told a little funny things about some of them. You heard about Judas Iscariot betraying the Lord. The quitter, the quiet ones, all that. To show you that Everyone is different. You are different. I'm not better than you, my friend. I'm not different than you. Just like you. Weaknesses, needs, desires. But what is the difference? Surrendering. Surrendering to the authority of the Lord God. That is the difference. Are you willing to do that? The Lord Jesus is here in the person of the Holy Spirit, willing to start the journey. Please start it. Accept the challenge and say, that's what I want. I want to start again. Okay, I want to start by learning how I can gain souls for the kingdom, the kingdom of God. There you go. And I promise you many things are going to be transformed for you. The moment that you say, Lord, Lead me, be my Lord, be my master. Not what I want, what you want. Healing will come to you, my friend. Healing in your soul, your traumas, like the disciples. Imagine a corrupt guy like Matthew writing one of the biographies of the Lord Jesus. Oh, that's beautiful. A messed up guy like Peter, you know, cutting ears and promising things leading the other disciples, planting churches. 
even people like Paul, you know, which was not part of the 12 disciples. But he was messed up because he came from an idea to go against the Christian church. If someone is Catholic or a Mormon, Jehovah Witness, Muslim, what else? I can even, atheist, Judaism, Messianics. You know, you just need to open your heart and humbly accept that you are wrong. Not to please me, but to please God and say, you know what, Lord God, I really want to get it right. Well, the, the way to start is by surrendering. You know what happened to Paul? He was on his way to Damascus, persecuting the Christians. He ended up on the ground, blind for three days. A little punishment from God just to make him wake up. Maybe that's what some people need in these days, don't you think? What I say to everybody is, it is okay to end it up on the ground once in a while, you know, because a little bit of blood there is not going to kill you. It's going to help you to see the reality, if you are not blind like Paul. <laughs> but the good news is after three days, oh, Ananias came, pray for him, the scales coming from his eyes. He was deceived. Like the song says, right? I was blind, but now I can see. So, give your life to the Lord. Let us know about it. I want you to know that next Sunday I'll be talking about the power of knowledge. Then the next one, pay attention to this one. Friends here, pay attention to this. How a follower of Jesus misses his chance to go to heaven. It's possible. And on August 25th, I'm going to talk about this particular topic. It's very important is for those who one moment are into faith, the next moment are doubting. For one moment they believe and they are so strong, and then the next second they don't know what they are even thinking. Undecisive mind. So this is what I have for you today. The Lord Jesus training His disciples from Victory Church of this. I thank you so much for joining us, and I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not ruin the produce of your land and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of Armies. We are very pleased to inform you that our new TV app for Samsung TVs is available now. Now, you must have a newest version of TV. It has to be 2022, 3 or 4 because the technology of Samsung requires that. That's not the case with the Fire Stick TV, Roku TV, or Apple TV. Those particular companies, they do, can help you to download and install GN TV, regardless of the year and model of their devices. Also remember, you are always welcome to check our website, vchurch.us. Here is the QR code, POUND. Yes, and YouTube, of course. We are broadcasting most of the time on Facebook as well. What we want is to share with the world the Word of God. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Geon TV app. With the Geon TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. 
by Giancarlo Vicitoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Also you took all of my tears You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You are When I feel that I'm ready Ready to quit and give up Ready to throw the towel Of my life away It is on those days When I realize How weak and fool I can be Considering my situation I cry out where are you God? You promised me to be with me here all the time You said that I will not be alone You promised me that you will be with me No matter what, no matter what And I know you are mine Here with me all the time Desperation when I 
thought that everything was lost I saw very far away your light Shining at the distance You make me believe that there was hope for me It was your light In the night To give me life It's your light Some days I felt ready to sink But every time you rescued me My own tears became the ink To write the prayers of my me It is absolutely amazing what I am feeling. Never before I experienced what you have done to me. I know that in the past I didn't see things as I do now. But honestly, you have changed everything for me. And uh, I don't want to let it go. 
don't want you to go anywhere. Stay here with me, by me, because you make me feel alive. And I know that you love me, and I love you. I love you with all of my heart. I belong to you. You brought me a new life, a life that is absolutely profound, real, and true. I feel alive, you make me fly, I'm in the clouds, you make me alive. This is my night, I'm gonna fight. You are so right, you are my son. 